So, just really quick while this is fresh in my brain, um, I am here in Denver. I was visiting a friend. And someone called um, the property manager who seems to have forgot that I was going to be a guest here for a couple of nights. Um, so, anyway this neighbor saw Nugget and was very upset that Nugget was in the van. Now the van was still in shade at this point of the morning and so I hadn't bothered to run the power cord yet. Um, I was planning on turning on the AC for her today because yes, it's going to be hot. Um, but yeah, so um, I didn't really get a chance to say any of that, which I didn't, it would have gone in one ear and out the other anyway, um, I could tell. So, within, I thought we sort of resolved it, but I kind of had a feeling it wasn't resolved yet. I was like, who else is going to visit? So then, within, not long, and actually this is a credit to animal services in Denver. Because I don't believe this woman made the call very long before animal services showed up. So good on you for your amazing quick response. Also good on you for how kindly you treated me. Um, I know that it's not obvious to everyone else that I can care for Nugget in the van. Um, and that I do make provisions to do so. Um, and that I, in the end, then am often left explaining myself to the world. Which is no, not fun, not cool. But, it is what it is. And it is another reason why I avoid cities and highly populated areas. Well, the animal service woman was wonderful, and she's like, well, I'll be back later to check on you, and I was like, no worries, and um, thank you for being so kind, and I appreciate you and all you do, and um, she left. When I went inside, I guess the woman had also decided to call the landlord, so three-pronged approach and I'm out. So, um, my friend and I have said goodbye. You know, I could park somewhere on the street, but then I'm that far away from Nugget, and I am a helicopter mom, and the whole reason it was cool for me to park here in the city was because I could plug in and have the AC on. So since I can't, then, yeah, because it is all about Nugget. <laughs> they have no idea, though, and how could they know? Alright, so I'm headed to the gas station first, and there I will decide where to head to next. I climbed a big old mountain to get to this area. Um, this is, uh, there is camping. I'm tired, and the road looks really ruddy at the moment, and so I thought it wasn't a good idea to go try to find a camp spot. I'm parked in this parking area, which is where the pit toilets are. Um, so I figure if a ranger comes up and says anything, I can ask them to assist me in finding an open spot so I can legitimately park and camp. So, whoo! Oh, see, there goes a jeep. And he's like, just dun, 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 dun. I mean, I'm sure I have enough clearance. It's just the muddy parts. I'm worried. I don't know how many, like, big muddy sections there might be. Yeah. This is hysterical. No, she's not happy at all. No, that's the sign of a completely miserable cat. Right? Even breathing. 
belly exposed. Totally like. <laughs> yep. That's an incredibly unhappy cat right there. <laughs> this is my view out the van window today, or out the van doors. Not bad. Turns out it's even, it's really close to my aunt's house. So I'm not going to have far to go. But I have no service. So I do have to go down the road enough to be able to give her a call. Because I don't want to just show up on her doorstep. Um... I just finished my breakfast. It was a nice-ish night. I Nugget has been in the middle of the night, um, just just wanting to go outside, like badly. A little frustrating. So, but, you know, like this morning, I mean, she begged at the door for like an hour. I was like, sorry, the sun's not up yet. You don't get to go outside till the sun's up. Yeah, she was, something's going on. But, mm. So I've been painting in my sketchbook. Oh. I'm just doing these like, you know, studies of bark, either like on these pines. Here, I'll show you. So this is just a little more brush work to it. This is more smooth, blended. Um, just wanted to see how each one looked. And this is basically a color study of what's out here. Right? And turn the page and you've got a little bit more detail as to what's out the van doors here. But, yeah. And then this was the previous location in Twin Lakes. So, you can see what's going on. I haven't been, um... I'm sort of in the middle of a painting. And I feel like I have to finish it before I can move on. I know. Sometimes it's really annoying. But there's this thing in the back of my head that's like, you got to finish this painting. It's not a bad start. So, okay. bring me so much anxiety. There's no reason for it to. Quite a beautiful morning here. Um, there are campsites down this road. However, with the rain, I was really nervous about driving down it. So the van is over there. There were others who spent the night as well. But it's a beautiful spot. So it's called Winger Ridge. And um, we are in Forsyth Canyon Trailhead. Which is 
I believe. <sighs> Times like this, I really wish I had um, a hiking partner. These are really beautiful. Look at them. Are they foxglove, maybe? Not sure. I think those other ones are malva. The little pale pink ones. I don't know, the place I was parked up on Twin Lake. Um, there was all this wild artemisia. It was really cool. Never seen that before. And I, you know, and I thought it was, and then I touched it, and I was like, oh my god, it is! Because artemisia is like really super, super silky smooth, soft. Yeah. So there's this really cool, like, rock formation, cliff, hilltop behind me, or in, well, behind where I'm parked, but I'm looking at it. That, that's what I'm looking at. <laughs> Pretty cool. Uh, oh, hey. and there it is, my, my scary, scary black cat. Hi. I know. You're mad at me because I didn't take you with me. I know. So yeah, I mean, I could hike alone, theoretically speaking. I am capable. I know my body's limitations, all that kind of fun stuff. Um, but in mountain lion country, it's better not to hike alone. Um, it's highly suggested to go with a buddy. So I am sort of of the mind that, um, yeah, I do not wish to become a mountain lion treat. I think today I am going to go, um, take care of my upload for Sunday. I wish I could get guaranteed a speedy upload and I would just upload two videos to make sure I didn't have to worry about it. Because I'm going to be at my aunt's and like here there's very, well here there's just no service. There there's like a tiny, tiny every once in a while service. <laughs> yeah. So... <sighs> there's that. Yeah. I also, you know, need things like coffee and my Cafe Pustello. I realize I cannot live without. <laughs> I just can't live without it. <laughs> I know. I have tried. I have tried other things. Yuck. I don't like them. I like my Cafe Pustello. So there you go. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I gotta go get me some of that. What I'm trying to do is make sure that when I get to my aunt, I don't have to just like up and leave in a day or two. You know, I can leave the van park for a few days. Um, Yeah, that's, that's what I'm trying to do. <sighs> so, I had something happen recently that made me... Hmm. So, and it's a first. I was climbing the mountain yesterday, or day before yesterday. And my overdrive started 
flashing. Um, now my meter that like says whether my engine is overheating or not looks like it was fine. But just in case I turned the heat on because I was told that if you have turn the heat on and your engine is um, overheating <laughs> that um, it will help cool the engine because it releases the heat that's built up in the engine. Anyway, so I turned the heat on and I noticed it just as I was coming to this spot. So I sat here for a couple of days letting it all cool down. All right. I'm looking, these the aspens are so pretty in the morning light. Once the light gets a little higher in the sky, they sort of lose their luminosity and they kind of get dull, but in the morning light and in the evening light, it happens too. They glisten. See how they sparkle? the angle which the light shines through the leaves that does it and it's not even as pretty as it was 15 20 minutes ago <clears throat> and I did some sketching in my sketchbook at this spot um, Nugget has been a pest. She's like getting up at four o'clock in the morning and begging to go outside. No, I do not fall for it. And no, she doesn't get to go outside until the sun is up. And this morning it was hard to tell because it was overcast. But it wasn't up that early. She was trying hard though. I mean crying at the door. She wanted to go outside so bad. As soon as I let her out, she's happy as a clam. It's like la la. Yes, on her leash, not to roam free. I would worry about her being a tasty treat. If I'm worried about me being a tasty treat on the hiking trail, you bet your ass I'm worried about her being a tasty treat. So, yeah, and I think, you know, if I think about why, I mean, it bothered me, didn't bother me, right? What, okay, I should finish my thought. Thinking about this whole thing that happened at my friend's apartment in Denver. What it did bother me about was that I do have mommy guilt. I don't like leaving her in the van. I knew that I had a remedy to the situation, being able to plug in the air conditioner and have it run for her so she would not overheat. But the people that I said that to didn't accept that as enough. And it wasn't... Um, I'm not sure why it's bothering me because animal control did not have a problem with me. And actually, and as far as I'm concerned, their opinion was the only opinion that mattered in that entire equation. Right. Um, and she saw that I had a plan in store for keeping it cool in here for Nugget and she felt the interior and you know so she could see that there wasn't a problem and she was going to come back later unfortunately you know the landlord said I had to get out so I had to leave 
Yeah, it's too bad. I wanted to go down this road so badly to go find a campsite. But every single vehicle I have seen come through here has been an all-wheel drive vehicle. If I saw someone like me go through, I'd go. I'd go find provisions and come back. Although, climbing this mountain um, is expensive. Cost me quite a bit of gas to get up here. It was the entire $35 I put in the tank. So, I mean, I know where the nearest gas station is, as I'm a fall downhill, so it's not gonna cost me to get to that gas station, but I'm gonna need money to fill up. Um. Alright, so, and these are the foothills, so I've already been to the 14ers, you saw those, now I'm in the foothills, and now I have perspective, so I visited my aunt in the past, and she's always like, oh, these are teeny. You haven't seen anything yet. And I, because of where I grew up in New England, they look like mountains to me. But now that I have seen the 14ers, I understand that these are foothills. And I still have no idea how I am going to capture the magnificence and size of them. Yeah, I've done some sketching, but I still haven't seen what I want to see come out of those sketches. So, but you know, we, we have, I've discussed this before. <sighs> Every new landscape is a new challenge for me and I have to learn something totally new. So, that's what's happening. For me right now like I look at these mountains and or foothills and you know the way the pines grow up them you can see each individual pine you know as it's like grown staggering up the hillside even onto the top I can see them But how do you do that without doing all of it? Because if I do all of it, I'm insane. I'll be insane by the end of it. Talk about an OCD trigger. In a big way. Um, and I already have a hard enough time starting another painting when there's a painting mid-process. So, yeah, but like as I look at this, it's like it's not just dense forest. So it's not just a blanket of green, but it's outcropping and mountainside and then trees and then more mountainside and then trees. Yeah. And photographs lie. <laughs> I know. But they do. 
you know, the more I work from life, whenever I go back to work from a photograph, I'm like, ah. But I have learned how to adjust my images so that I get what I need from them. And the rest of it can come out of my memory of the scene. Or if I'm lucky enough, I can still be there to look it out, to look out the window and see it. Here comes a cyclist. Hey, no, I don't want you playing in that puddle. No. She's actually been pretty good about it. It's bad enough we're in a parking lot. You know, I worry about antifreeze. Um, which is why I don't want her drinking out of this puddle. I'm already having, like, cat mommy paranoia because... She's been drinking so much water in the van. But we're high in elevation, so of course she's drinking so much water. She needs it. And she's peeing normally. Like, there's nothing abnormal about her behavior or her health. I'm just being a paranoid helicopter mom. And I'm kind of glad I've taken a breather here in this parking lot. This beautiful trailhead parking lot, may I say. So I'm going to try to figure out what it is I'm going to make for food. Um before I move and go to the store because I need a full brain to go to the store with. And I gotta tell you, this up and down and altitude thing does mess with my brain just a tiny little bit. Thank you for joining me today, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, you can hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and if you'd like to contribute, all the links are below in the description and very welcome. Have a great day, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye.